My task today is to make a window screen. That's not that unusual. I've made a lot of them over the years. What makes this a little different is that the house is a 1906 Victorian. Now the way they hung window screens a hundred years ago is a lot different than today. But we can adapt. I'm going to use modern products and a little ingenuity and we're going to make a window screen for that window way up there. I measured the window opening and it's 36 inches high by 23 inches wide. When you measure a window opening, you want to measure the left and right sides. You want to measure the top and bottom all independently to verify each dimension. Because if they're not uniform, you can cut your screen parts, your styles and rails, to those exact dimensions and it'll fit very well. My window is nice and uniform. Now, I bought a kit. This screening kit is made to bake a screen for a 36 inch square window. We are going to cut these parts to the exact dimensions I need. The kit comes with everything you need to assemble one screen. I'll show you how it all works. This is what a single piece of the screen frame looks like. This groove here is what's going to hold the screen in place. In that groove is a rubber spline. You take that out to put the screen in. It comes already installed this way. We're going to leave it in there until we cut these to size. That way we're also cutting our spline to the right size. I'm going to mark the length of each one of these parts. Now these corner pieces that hold the frame together take up a little space and we have to subtract an inch and a half from our finished size to make up for that amount. So instead of 23 inches, we're going to cut two parts to 21 and a half. I use a black pen because it's a lot easier for me to see that. 36 inch side styles are going to be cut to, actually I'm going to cut them to 34 and 3 eighths. It's 35 or 36 inches overall minus an inch and a half for these corners but then I'm also taking off an eighth of an inch for these mounting clips that I'm going to use when I put the screen in. And you'll see why when we get to the installation process. So these get marked 34 and 3 eighths. Now I like to put a full mark across there so as I cut I have something you know that's easier for me to see. There we go. I'm going to cut these with a hacksaw. Now you need a very fine tooth hacksaw. This is the blade I'm using. It's a 24 tooth per inch blade. You don't want a coarse blade because this material is very thin and the saw will kind of catch if the teeth are too coarse. As it is I might experience that a little bit, but fine tooth is much better. I'm going to clamp them in my bench vise gently. There's my mark right there. And I'm simply going to very gently saw these off. There we go. 
one. Now that cutting process left a little bit of a burr on the edge of the aluminum. I'm going to take a file and just take that burr off just so it's a little safer to handle and also that'll um, kind of ensure that we don't catch our screen material on it and accidentally put a little hole in the screen. Just like that. Okay. Now, you remember I told you the splines are in the grooves? That's the way the material comes. Now's the time to take the spline out of the groove. You need some little tool like an awl just to get in behind it so you can lift it out. Now we're ready to assemble this. It helps to kind of line up all the parts in the directions they go. All your, your grooves facing the same way, facing up. The groove it goes on the inner side of the framework. First thing we do is we insert our corner connectors in the ends of the short pieces. Simple, they slide right in. See? Then, slide them into the longer pieces. And this is where you have to kind of do both uh, long ones at the same time. Flip it over. And I like to stand this on the ground. I have that to assist me, right? There we go. There's our frame. Now we're ready to put the screen in it. There we go. Oh, look at this. These are the little spring tensioning clips that help keep the screen tight in its opening. I didn't put those in and I need to add those. So I'm going to try to do that here on the table. Let's see. They go on the side of the frame. I'm putting them on the side. Depending on your window situation, you might want them on the bottom or the top. The way my window screen is going to go in though is it's going to go into these uh, clips I have on the side here let me hold this up so you can see maybe that'll help see this is this is a little spring tensioner and that'll push against the side of the window frame itself and push the screen over tight against the other side of the frame there we go so here's our splines, our retainer splines. I'll put one in each location where they're going to go. And then here's our screen material. Now this is a roll. You can buy different sizes and lengths. This is 30 inches by 7 feet. Uh, I'm going to cut this. I'm going to pre-cut the length just a little bit longer than our frame. The stuff cups cuts easily with scissors. It'll get retrimmed to the frame after it's installed. I like to have plenty of extra. That gives me something to pull and hold as I uh, tighten the screen across the opening. Ah, and I just found one more thing. This is the little pull tab that helps install the screen from the inside of the house and that is going to go if I don't wrap it up in there 
it's going to go opposite my spring clips on this side. Now that just snaps onto the frame like that. This goes over the frame and we're ready to go. Now it's really helpful to have one of these uh, it looks like a little pizza cutter actually doesn't it? This is what presses the little spline into the groove. Each end of this tool is different. One end the wheel has a little groove in it like a pulley. The other end the wheel is flat. The grooved end helps kind of follow the shape of the spline. The flat end sometimes is just useful to, to press uh, squarely on the surface. So I'm going to start by attaching one end to the screen and I just try to line it up square. I look at the, the little threads of the screen and make sure it's kind of square. Uh, what we do is we put the spline right over the groove and then we use our little wheel tool and I'm using the side that has the, the little uh, what do you call it, the, the little curve in it to fit over the spline and I just roll along and I'm putting you know not overly hard pressure on it I'm just making sure it's staying on the spline and I press it down into the groove like that Maybe I'll go over it just one more time, just to be sure it's down. I want to be careful to stay on the, the spline, because if I go off, I could tear the screen. So there, that's one end is in. Now we're going to go and do the other end. Now this can be a little, a little tricky, because you have to get a little tension on the screen as you do this. So what I do is I'm, I'm pulling and I have my, my lower finger sort of pushing the frame away and I'm just doing a, a gentle pull on the screen material to keep it taut. And I just engage that spline in the groove right there. Just press it in. Okay. Then I'm going to pull a little as I go each little spot. I'm not going to roll quite so quickly. I'm just going to pull, roll an inch, pull, and roll an inch. This allows me to get the screen, uh, you know, tight. You want tension on it. There we go. Now I can check that, be sure it looks like it's got the right tension because we can always pull the spline out and tighten it up a little if we need to. We want to make sure we don't have any buckling. That looks pretty good. I think we're okay. Now the spline stretched a little bit. See it ran up on the ends here, but that's okay. I'll just cut that off later. Now we're going to kind of do the same thing going down one side at a time. It's not that hard to do. It takes a little coordination. But that's not not that difficult. Now 
we go. I'm going to turn this around because the camera tripod is over there in the way. And it's easier for me to work on this side. So one more to do here. How's that looking? Yeah, it looks pretty good. Okay, here we go. Last one. Push it in the groove. Pull on the screen a little bit. Just gentle pull on the screen. Oops. There. Let's see. Before I roll that all the way flat, let's make sure it looks seated. Yeah, that looks good. Mm hmm. All right. One more roll to seat this last side all the way in. And we're ready to cut the screen, trim off the excess. I like to use a knife. You can probably do this with scissors. I feel the knife. Uh, works quite well to run right along the screen material. So I just insert the knife and slide the knife flat against the frame. There we go. If it cuts a little off like that, we just slice it that way. All right. Insert the knife and slide it right along the top of the screen. That's it. I have to cut these excess pieces of spline in the corner, too. There we go. So, let's see, how is the best way to cut these? I think I will first try it with just the... Take the tip of the knife and cut that off. It's pretty tough stuff. That's one. That's the other one. Then I take a little flat blade screwdriver and I just press those corners down in there because the rolling tool just doesn't quite get to that corner. And that's it. We have our screen. There we go. Pretty good. Now we get to go figure out how to get it mounted up there. So the window here on the right hand side gets the screen. And these are interesting windows. Let's see, I brought something to help me. First I want to just check the size, see if I if need this fit appropriately. Like it's going to work. Okay, a little bit tight, a little bit tight at the bottom, but that's good. We don't want any bugs to get around the screen. Okay. Now this installs using these clips. I'll show you up close. This fits over the edge of the screen. 
and they actually will pivot. Here's what the clip looks like. It fits over the edge of the screen. I'm going to put them on the top and bottom of the right hand side. And it acts like a hinge. It's going to pivot. I'm going to put them in with these little screws. That'll be the pivot point. It came with these brads to hammer them in, but I prefer to use the screws. So I'm going to mark this. where I need to drill a little hole to put that screw and it's lining right up with this stop on the window there. And I'm going to mark the upper one the same way here. Let's see. Right there. I don't know, hopefully you can see that. My fingers hopefully are out of the way enough. And a little pencil mark right there. Then we're going to drill two very shallow pilot holes. Then we're simply going to attach these clips. Looks pretty good. Just snug enough that those. Now we're going to see if this is going to fit and pivot properly. Let's see if I can get this up out of the way. Is that in the way of the camera? All right. Here's our screen. Get my little brackets open and slide them into it, top and bottom. And then, if we can't pivot it closed. Looks about right. here. I need a little more tension on the springs. So we have a little gap on the right hand side. You see how it fits in the clip up there? The spring on the side of the screen puts a little tension and shoves it over to the left, keeping it firmly in place. On a new home this entire right side and left side of the screen would fit in a channel and you wouldn't have any gap. But we don't have that luxury here on this old house. So I think this is about the best we're going to do. So let's take a look how it fits on the outside. Let's see. I see what I'm doing here with the camera. I need to hire a better camera crew. It looks pretty good. You see how the little clip is holding it? Let's see which way I gotta turn this. Clip holding it up there. And the clip holding it down here. From the street, the house looks just the same. 
Thank you.